with me is Gene Bookman and Ruder Jordans. And you'd never guess it, but both of these women are deeply involved with trash. <laughs> now, obviously, I can't leave it that way, so they, are, they do both have projects which involve trash. And we'll find out what they are and why they're doing it. And, Ruder, why don't I start with you? Okay. We've done the, well, we'll start with the fact that we've done the coastal cleanup for several years here in Lubbock. And that is what? That is the state of Maine and every state in the U.S. pretty much works with the Ocean Conservancy during one specific week every year in September to clean the beaches. And you don't just clean beaches, you also have a data sheet where you write down every single little cigarette butt that you pick up. Every single little thing you pick up, you, you write down what you got. And then we summarize it and send it to the state of Maine. A little like bird counting. A little like bird counting, but you better have your gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we've been doing that for several years through Apple and Tours of Quebec and Cobbs Cook, and we wanted to do something more about, we didn't want to just be counting the trash and cleaning the beaches. We wanted to get a message across. And I had seen other people doing art made from trash they picked up at the beach. So that's where the idea came. And this is our third year now. And so tell me exactly what happens. Who, do, who collects the trash? Who turns it into art? And where do you exhibit it? Anybody that wants to goes down to pick up the trash at the beach. Where? Any local beach. Any local beach. Any local beach. Um, and the entry fee is a bag of trash you picked up at the beach. All right. And you, whatever inspires you, and if you look at these things. Um, and these are all examples. These two puppets we had last year, and I fell in love with them, so I ended up buying them, because we do have an auction where people, a silent auction where people can buy them. Um, so these two puppets were made by Chuck Kniffen, uh, and he uh, makes this because he works with autistic kids and it's something that he does with the kids that helps them to express themselves better. Okay. Um, so you you enter the contest and then you put some you take bits and pieces of the trash that you've collected mm -hmm. and you make something I won't call it beautiful but you make something well, artistic out of it. Oh I'm kids. sorry it is beautiful I'm sorry. The kids made the little yes. the younger kids we had two groups of kids this year at Summer Rec the older kids made their own, each one had their own project. The younger kids together made this jellyfish. Okay. And I do believe it's beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> and then, do you have a committee that selects from among the entries? What we're going to have is a popular vote. So it's simply a matter, there, there are no prizes. If you're, the, the major prize is if somebody buys your, <laughs> what you made. Right. Um, so there's the silent auction, and there there also is a voting box where you can vote for your favorite entry. Okay, these are going to be placed on exhibit where? At the Lubeck Landmarks Mulholland Gallery. Starting at, when? The exhibits will be, the exhibitors have to bring their art in on September 12th. Okay, and so everybody that's making a piece of trash art has to have it in to Mulholland Market by... September 12th. 10 to 12. 10 a.m. to noon. On that day. On that day. On and if they can't day. make it, just call me and let me know and we'll work okay. out something else. And then what happens? And then it's exhibited there until the 26th. We will have an open house, the reception that Saturday, the 15th? Yes. The 15th. Um, and that will be from 4 to 6 o'clock. Okay. At the gallery. And then after that, you'll have a, a silent auction. During, right, the silent auction will finish on the 26th. It will. Now, and the funds from the auction go where? They're divided between the author and uh, Lubeck Landmarks and Apple. And we should explain what Lubeck Landmarks and Apple is for those that don't live here year-round, and there aren't too many that do. <laughs> Lubeck Landmarks is what, and Apple is what? Okay, Lubeck Landmarks is an organization that was when, when the McCurdy Smokehouse, the last smokehouse in the U.S., was closed um, in 1991. Everybody was worried about it was going to be turned into condos. 
but instead a group, a nonprofit group was formed to preserve it, and that's Lubeck Landmarks. And Apple? And Apple is the association to promote and protect the Lubeck environment. And we do it in a variety of ways. One is cleaning the beaches. <laughs> Both were their causes. Now, the other trashy lady here is Jean, <laughs> Jean Bookman, and she has a completely separate project, which she's involved with, with Susan Riley, who's hiding over here behind the camera, folks. <laughs> And why don't you tell us exactly what it is you're doing, where and when? Okay, on September 15th, that's the Saturday of the uh, reception at Lubeck Landmarks, we, Susan and I, are building a trash from the sea labyrinth. And we are going, hopefully it will be done by 10 in the morning, and we'll be there from 10 to 4. It's open to the public to come and walk the labyrinth. Now, you're building it where? Oh, I'm sorry, at Flatiron Corner. And the origin of this is that both Susan and I have had pieces in the Trash from the Sea exhibit that Ruta does. Mm -hmm. And last year we felt, well, you know, it's a great exhibit. It is wonderful. But I wanted something more experiential that people could actually a labyrinth is something you can walk through. Right. And I wanted something that people could just feel how much trash, just a fraction of a fraction of the amount of trash that we put into the ocean that pollutes the ocean. So we decided a good way to do this would be to make a labyrinth, which is a walking path. It's like a maze, but it's not a maze because in the labyrinth, you know you follow the path to go in and out, so you don't have to worry about getting lost in it. You and there's, there's no minotaur at the end. There's right? no minotaur, <laughs> but there is something at the end. And when you reach the end, you can turn around and walk the same path out. Um, we have picked up trash one day a month since September 2011. So we have 12 months of trash of uh, one day a month picking it up and we have assembled it, which means that we have collected a lot of the beach rope and a lot of the plastic and bottles, and etc., and other wonderful objects, and we have tied them on with more trash, rope, and plastic to the beach rope, which we have uh, cut into about 10-foot lengths so they can be handled. They're all stored behind my house now. We have probably at least 650 feet of assembled trash, and we will be bringing it down to Flatiron Corner Saturday, early Saturday morning, and then... Oh, and the date again is? The 15th of September. Of September. Okay. And uh, hopefully we'll have a crew of people down there to help us take out the lengths of assembled trash and lay them on an outline I'm going right. to do probably Friday afternoon. That's the plan. So that would be amazing. <laughs> yes. Did you have any questions, Jean? Uh, well, I've, through the years, I've been watching Jean do these labyrinths, and you've been, I don't know how long you've been doing labyrinths, but I was wondering, why labyrinths? What, what's so special about labyrinths to you? Um, I've been doing them for about 15 years. I had one in a field where I used to live. When I moved here, I had the beach, so I didn't feel a need to actually do one in my backyard. Um, I make labyrinths because for me they're, it's a meditative walk and it really sort of calms you down and, and you can really think about things, process things. And, um, and so for, it made sense to me to do it for the trash from the sea uh, because I really wanted people to, to really feel the amount of trash that um, accumulates. Okay. One of the things that I, I wish we could come up with, you know how in Midcoast, Maine, uh, the people are using rope to make those uh, doormats? Mm -hmm. They're using lobster trap rope because they no longer can use that kind of rope, so the, the, there was a whole lot left over. I'm hoping that one day somebody will bring something into our exhibit that will show another way that we can use whatever it is that, that they picked up and start a, a, the cottage industry here. <laughs> and if anybody wants to get in touch with you with brilliant ideas or any questions well, whatsoever, questions. how do they get in touch with you? 
Um, they can call me at 733-2385 or um, tours at tours of Lubeck and Cobscook.com. Okay. Yeah. And, and the other neat thing about the exhibit is we have no rules. If the only thing you have to do is... Just my type of exhibit. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, right now, I better get in there. You better get in there. Trash from the sea. And trash means it's man-made. Because right. everything else, I mean, urchin shells are beautiful, but they're not trash. Right. <laughs> so all of this stuff is man-made man things that we found on the beach. The kids at the summer wreck made this jellyfish. And it, there's a message there. Very good. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't the message. I think we're done. That's all right. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Ruda. Thank you, John. And before the rest of the house falls down, we'll see you at the exhibits. <laughs> brought to you by SAIL, supporting the arts in Lubeck, and by Cobscook Bay Music. Keep an eye out for other special shows we will be doing besides our monthly calendar. That's it for September, and we appreciate you watching. Be sure to tell anyone you know who might be interested to watch as well. We'll see you next month.